Welcome back. Let's look at an example of how to find the inverse Laplace transform. So here we have a Laplace transform. We know it's a Laplace transform and that it is in your frequency domain or your S domain because S is your variable. So you see there you've got F of S and all the variables in your expression, they're all S's. So we want to convert this from F of S into F of T. So when we finish at the bottom, we want to have F of T equals to some function in terms of T. So... The way we do this is we always start with the denominator. You have to have some kind of strategy when you're doing these things. Otherwise, you just end up going in circles. So if we look at the denominator here, we're going to have a look and see whether or not we can find the form of the denominator on our formula sheet. So if I go to the formula sheet here, we remember that the first column here in your formula sheet gives you f of t right when you move from the first column to the second column you are moving from the time domain to the frequency domain and you are applying the laplace transform in order to get this f of s here so moving from year to year is finding the laplace transform moving backwards is finding the inverse laplace transform and that's what we're going to do here so we know what f of s is we have to move back from f of s to f of t so if we look at our denominator and you see you've got s squared plus some number Right, so this number is not as important as that s squared over here. Right? So we look at the right hand side and you look at all the denominators in the fractions and you see where does it look like this. So we have s squared is going to be that, that, that and that. Right, so it's going to be one of those there. You see you've got plus a number and that narrows it down to this one and this one, right? And if we look at the numbers in the column, it is either number three or number four, yeah? So what I've done is I've just written it out on another page so that it's easier for you to see because that printer is actually quite small, right? So it's going to be either number three or number four. Right? And if you compare the denominator, we've got s squared plus 9, and here your denominator is s squared plus a squared, s squared plus a squared. Yeah? If we change this 9 to where you have a number squared, it would then be 3 squared. So let's just write that out. So that's going to be 3s plus 7 over s squared plus three squared right so now the denominator is in, is in is in exactly the same form as what is on your table and that's the key here is you have to be sure that your function is going to be in exactly the same form as your formula sheet right so once we've got our denominator in place we then move to the numerator and here you'll see that your numerator is made up of two terms and according to our formula sheet, we can't have that. We need to have only one term. So for number three, as well as number four, you can only have one term in your numerator. But that you can change. Because this numerator, you can then split into two. So we can write that as 3s over s squared plus 3 squared plus 7 over s squared plus 3 squared, right? So now we've got denominator in the form on the table, right? Both 3 and 4, number 3 and number 4. Here your denominator is also the same as both number 3 and number 4, right? If we move to the numerator, you have one term in each of these. So if we look at the first term, of this transform you look at your numerator that looks the same as number four right so you can write that first term as three times s over s squared plus three squared right and if you look at that you see 
that it looks exactly like number four on your table right so that one we can then write down and say okay that is exactly as number four on the table if we go to the second term we can write that as seven times something over a squared plus three squared and we look at our table let's look at our table here so then we've got a number because a is a number right in number three so that means that our second term is going to be this number three here but you'll see that your numerator has to match the second term in your denominator that means that in your denominator you've got a to be three it means you need the three in your numerator as well because it's a number you can introduce it so we introduce the three over there because you've introduced it you have to compensate right because you can't change the value of your function so that means that this portion here is exactly the same form as number three right so then we have each of these terms are now in exactly the same form as what is on your formula sheet so number four we have in this form it means that we can now say that our function f of t is going to have a cos form right where a in this case is going to be three so we can say then f of t is equal to three cos a is three t plus seven over three this expression here is the same as number three on your formula sheet which is a sine function so it's going to be sine of 3t right please do not forget to put that f of t here if you don't you're saying that this value this expression is equal to that expression and that's not the case this is just a different form of this here right so now you've converted from f of s to f of t using your inverse laplace transform right and that would be your solution in this case